Good afternoon. Good morning. It's it's noon. Is that is that morning? Is that afternoon? I'm not exactly sure of the how exactly we break that down. But welcome everyone to uh, hopefully the the first of many at least twice a month we're going to be doing uh, Q and A sessions here uh, on Twitch. Uh, the idea being that uh, I used to do these Q and A sessions called Three Beers Deep, uh, and then just kind of got away from it because. I started playing Mario, basically. <laughs> Mario Maker got me away from answering people's questions. So it's looking for a way to bring it back. Uh, I wanted to find a way to reward uh, and thank the people that uh, subscribe here on Twitch and support uh, me doing what I do. Uh, so this is not exclusive to, to uh, people that subscribe on Twitch, but if you are a subscriber to the channel, uh, you will get a preference on questions. But if you have questions, feel free to dump them into the chat and uh, I will get to as many as I can in the next uh, you know, 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, and then the, the hope is to do this twice a month as a way to uh, talk one-on-one -on -one with everyone uh, that goes beyond just playing the video games that we play here on Twitch uh, and over on YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out the questions. Uh, I had sent out a message to Twitch subscribers, so if you wanted to get your question in early, uh, that was one way that you could do that. Uh, so a couple of people did do that. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of the first ones here from the Dweeb Jar. First of all, thanks for supporting the channel, Dweeb Jar. Really appreciate it. Uh, I have a question. I've been wanting to get into the horror genre, but I'm not sure about the best place to start. I'm a bit of a wimp when it comes to scares, but I've always found the twists and mysteries found in horror to be very intriguing. Are there books, games, or movies you'd recommend as essential beginner horror material? Keep up the great work. I love watching the streams when I'm having my first cup of coffee in the morning. Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, in terms of where you should start in uh, the horror genre, uh, over at uh, Kotaku, uh, I did a series of articles in October uh, that were, uh, or rather, Shocktober, let's be specific, uh, that centered around uh, two different ideas. Uh, the first idea uh, was that you're uh, deeply embedded in the horror film genre and you've kind of seen everything. What are uh, 30 movies, uh, or 31 movies you could watch in October that you know, maybe you haven't heard of. And then I did another list that was, you know, my favorite horror films of all time that aren't just my favorites, but also are kind of a how-to guide of where the horror genre has been uh, and where it is right now. So uh, I would uh, send you on a link. Uh, let me find out what the the actual title of that was. Uh, Kotaku Horror, 31 Movies. Uh, There's 31 Movies for Horror Newcomers. So if you search that uh, on Google, I'm going to go ahead and dump that into the Twitch chat uh, if anyone wanted to uh, check that out. So you've got that in there as well. But that's uh, sort of a great guide. It's a personalized list of where to start with. You know, some of the movies on here include, uh, you, know, it's, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Babadook. Like, Nightmare on Elm Street is a classic horror film from Wes Craven, and The Babadook is a modern classic that I really enjoyed. The It Follows, modern classic. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, old classic. Uh, Hellraiser, just a personal favorite. Alien, a movie that, you know, is often thought of in the thriller category, but I think it's absolutely a horror film. Evil Dead 2, I still like Evil Dead 1, but Evil Dead 2 is my preference. The Conjuring, modern film from James Wan. Also, these movies aren't necessarily, you know, the quote-unquote best movies. It's more about uh, these movies I enjoy and that also, I think, represent uh, sort of modern and past horror cinema. So, with that in mind, uh, da, da, da. The Mute Kai asks, what are your walls made out of? I'm considering getting a house soon, but like one of those walls, I can play Wii U games through. Uh, my, <laughs> so I'm in an apartment, and whatever these walls are made out of is not made well for Wii U's. Uh, I, I don't know. The last apartment, the last two apartments, three apartments I've had, basically the apartments I've had since the Wii U has come out, whatever is in between the Wii U has just not worked out well for that device. It's been unfortunate. It's been sad. I, I would have been willing to pay Nintendo to uh, give me little nodes that went along my apartment so they could stretch the signal, but they've never done anything like that. Maybe that's not even technically possible, uh, but that's something that I desperately want them to do with NX. I'm hoping that the NX also has the same capabilities that the Wii U does uh, because I like the fact that you can take that gamepad around. I like the fact that the machine can be in another room. I hope that they can reach further, you know, and, and again, like I said, I'd be willing to pay money for an extender so that I'm able to enjoy that in a way that I don't necessarily get to uh, otherwise. So uh, I don't have any recommendations, unfortunately, on what you should paint your walls or what should be inside your walls. All I know is what's inside my walls, what's been inside my walls, has not been uh, <laughs> what you should have in order to have a uh, great Wii U uh, experience. Uh, White Rabbit 
OBJ, uh, who uh, actually uh, is in the chat right now, but sent in a question ahead of time. He says, it's about VR and HoloLens. Long time listener, short time subscriber. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate it. Are you someone who has an opportunity to interact with VR? Uh, or as you are someone who has an opportunity to interact with VR more than general gamers, do you think VR is going to be able to reach enough people in a short enough time span to stay relevant? Feels like we're going to see a lot of neat demos and some ported games, but the important AAA titles that need to be built from the ground up are going to be a long time coming, if at all. An extra piece of technology that is limited use but costs the same as a console seems a very narrow target audience. Having seen videos of Microsoft's HoloLens, it seems that while limited at the moment, it could have more real-world applications than VR, especially when mixed with RFID. Uh, so, for example, medical overlays, driving aids with nighttime road markings and maps built in, child tracking, uh, look at your phone and a pop-up tells you the battery level, blah, blah, blah. I can see a future that is similar to the overlays we see in Watch Dogs and The Division, where information is just shown to us without having to interact with them. I can't see VR making that much of a difference in that many people's lives. Thoughts. Great stuff as always. White Rabbit OBJ. White Rabbit Object, a Jurassic Park reference, which I did not pick up on, but he pointed it out to me. That's pretty uh, fantastic. Uh, so uh, let's see, uh, VR, uh, I have, my expectations for VR in the mainstream are extremely limited, uh, they're low. Um, you know, one of the things that White Rabbit brings up is the, you know, where are the AAA big budget games going to come from? And I think that's why if you are someone that is curious about VR, your best bet is probably going to be PlayStation VR, because I think that Sony is the most experienced and seems to be having to bet the most on building VR experiences that have the aesthetics that we have come to expect from games for a PlayStation 4. Now, granted, because of the way VR works, in which the frame rate has to be at a certain, uh, has to be much faster than usual, you can't get away with 30 frames a second in VR in order for it to work the way it's supposed to work, it means that the visual fidelity is going to be a step back. You know, it's probably somewhere between PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. But the, you know, the VR part is supposed to make up for that. But I, for, for my money, we haven't seen a lot of these games. But if I have to go on gut reaction, I do think... It sounds like Sony is talking the talk and ready to walk the walk. And what I'm hearing behind the scenes about the game, the, the different studios that work, at least internally at Sony, is that a lot of them are being pressured and asked into creating VR experiences. Now, whether those ex quote-unquote experiences will be full-fledged video games or if they're just going to be uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, little one-off demos, little short things, we're not, I don't really know. You know, that's something that we're not going to know for a little while yet. But I do know that I am hearing from people at Sony that VR is something that's being taken seriously that said, some of the developers I've talked to that have been asked or uh, told to pitch on that stuff, they don't necessarily get as excited about it. Because while a lot of people think VR is interesting, they also see it as limiting. And so do you want to spend two years of your life working on an experience that not that many people are going to play? That's, you know, uh, a difficult problem in front of uh, some developers. But I do expect Sony to invest heavily in VR games. And so uh, while Oculus, yes, is spending money on games... I guess Valve might make some stuff and there'll be a lot of experimental things. If you're looking for like the big money behind VR stuff, I think PlayStation VR is probably going to be where it's at, especially in the short term. I'm excited for VR. I've uh, pre-ordered a Oculus that I might cancel. Um, I mostly just wanted to get my name on the list in case I wanted to go through with it. Um, I, I'm super interested in the room stuff that's happening with the Vive, uh, but just kind of hard to know where all that stuff's going to fall. And then also the feeling that I have to buy two of them. You know, I have to buy PlayStation VR because I just recommended that you buy one. And I think that's where some of the most interesting games are going to happen in terms of budgets and fidelity. But then also it's like, well, the Vive and Oculus and I can use stuff on the PC. Kind of hoping that someone can hack a PlayStation VR to work on the PC, but I don't know where all that stuff's going to fall. I don't know when it's all going to get released. It's all kind of up in uh, the clouds right now. Uh, Bionic Iguana asks, what, if any, games do you think could be next in the Maker series? If it wasn't Capcom, I'd probably say Mega Man. Well, again, once again, Bionic Iguana, thanks for supporting the channel as you get my goofy little face next to your icon there. Hmm. It seems to make sense that, uh, you know, I think the one that people think about a lot is uh, Zelda uh, or Metroid as being sort of uh, distinct possibilities for the maker games could go next. I think it's difficult because what's interesting about Mario is that you just have sort of a short encapsulated experience, right? So you're going left to right or whatever uh, on a singular level as opposed to uh, Zelda and Metroid, which are more... I don't know. I guess they, they feel grander and bigger. Uh, I guess, you know, you could just be creating dungeons uh, in Zelda. I guess in Metroid, you could be creating 
certain environments. I'm just I'm wondering how they're going to limit that scope or not limit that scope, uh, or will will they decide to just double down on Mario in the near term? So you know, maybe the Maker series becomes something uh, that beyond uh, goes beyond just Mario, but that. Uh, in terms of what we should expect next, it'll actually just be, you know, the NX gets Mario Maker 2 in which the, the tools are are wildly uh, expanded. You know, are we never going to get sloped planes in Mario Maker because it's both technically difficult and they're saving it for the next one? Are they not going to do... It doesn't seem like they're going to add world stitching to Super Mario Maker. So does that mean that comes in the sequel? And that's a big bragging point is that, oh, now you can create whole games out of uh, your Mario Maker stages based on thematic uh, uh, things that you've created. So you can do worlds and games out of that. Those all seem like distinct uh, possibilities and natural expansions for Mario. And, and it wouldn't surprise me if they decide to go down the path of just another one of those before they actually create uh, a spinoff for another one of their mainline franchises. Uh, I don't know how they do it for 3D stuff, but I just really want another Super Mario 3D Land or another Super Mario Galaxy. So that seems that's quite a, a step up is to uh, allow people to make things in 3D. But I would really like something like that, or just make another 3D Mario. I'll I'll take that too. I need to replay 3D Land is or 3D World is or both. They're both great games. They're both great games. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, this is actually just uh, a note that came in uh, from TXK Surian. Surorian? 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 Surorian. Hey, Patrick, love the channel and match three. I definitely enjoyed the opportunity to ask you a question for the new Three Beers Deep and have some and have some of them read. For this first question, though, I just wanted to give you my appreciation. And knowing I'm competing with a smaller audience than you have on Twitch or Kotaku, hopefully this reaches you louder. Like a lot of your fans, I come to you from the giant bomb days. However, my perspective is somewhat unique because I found the site right around the time you joined them, so I have no memory of pre-Patrick Giant Bomb. I was going to pharmacy school at the time and almost had no time or money for games, and watching you guys play games kept my spirits up when I should have been studying. It's weird to say, but I, I, while I like video games, I love Giant Bomb. It was the rock I had while I was going through a heartbreaking divorce. It kept me distracted when my father passed away and nothing else could. All those things are probably why the loss of Ryan and New Departure were some of the biggest shocks I've gone through in that time. I'm sure you've heard this a million times from your fans, but all, all of you are close friends to people. All of you are close friends to people who you've never met. As someone who's also turned 30 in the past year, you were always someone I looked up to and rooted for. I originally went to school for video game design at DigiPen, and when that fell apart, I still wanted to maintain a close tie to the industry. Despite now working full-time as a pharmacist, part of me still longs for the gaming world. I've even taken over as the news guy and one of the streamers at a website Twitch channel that some friends started. It's just a hobby, of course, but keeping track of you is very inspiring for me. Just go for it and actually create something, even if no one else reads it or watches it. Most importantly, I honestly think I'm a more open-minded, introspective person thanks to you. So supporting you on Twitch seems to be the least I could do to repay all the years of entertainment you've provided. While I wish I had the time to watch every stream or read every article, I can at least chip in and be a subscriber to the channel. I wish you nothing but the best going forward. I will always support your work. If I'm ever in Chicago, I'd love to buy you a beer. At least drop some off at the cards office. That is an incredibly kind thing to say. Uh, I'm uh, consistently... Uh, humbled uh, by the support I've seen from people at Giant Bomb and, and Kotaku and here and, and all the places I have been throughout my career. Uh, you know, I don't get to do what I do without people saying, that sounds interesting. You seem like you know what you're doing. Why don't you keep doing that? And, and every day it, it sort of blows my mind that anyone feels that way. Um, but then it's, you know, notes like that that uh, really keep me going. You know, this, over the years, uh, you know, when I've covered harassment or talked about harassment on the internet myself, you know, people ask like, why I keep doing it? Like, what what allows you to kind of sort through the negativity? And it's stuff like that. It's it's someone uh, writing in and saying that I helped you. You helped me through a hard time. Uh, you actually mean something to me, and and that's what gets me to up every day to do what I do. That's what uh, why I, I do streams before work. It's why I work as hard as I do at work. It's why I do stuff after work. It's because people like that. Um, you know, it, it really just makes my day and it makes my week and makes makes my career uh, because I think without stuff like that, uh, I don't know if I would work as hard. And so knowing that there are people out there rooting for me, uh, cheers to the X-Files. The truth is out there that there is another episode tonight. Uh, the Kink. What do you think of your Apple Watch? Which we'll tie this into a question uh, from Ian280291. How do you feel about your after watch, uh, Apple Watch after all this time? I wear mine every day, but only check time and set timers occasionally. I don't use any apps. I guess apps aren't the answer for every device nowadays. But I'd love to hear your thoughts because I know you and Katie have one. Uh, so I've had mine since uh, the Apple Watch uh, first came out. Uh, at the time, I had given two back-to-back -back talks. And the, the money I received for giving those talks essentially covered buying two Apple Watches, and, and that combined with the fact that uh, my wife was looking to purchase uh, sort of a Nike 
uh, Plus or, or some sort of exercise device. She had had one that had broke, and so she was in the market for another one. We both saw the Apple Watch. We both love our Apple devices, and uh, you know, you certainly benefit from having multiple Apple devices that talk to each other because they, they they talk to each other best than other devices that are not made by Apple, which is both a positive and a negative for the way their, their devices work. Um, I still wear mine every day. Uh, I think the biggest thing about the Apple Watch, one, I wouldn't tell anyone to buy this one. I'd say wait for the second or third one. I think that's true not just of Apple devices, but any piece of hardware that is going to evolve on an annual or near annual basis is that the first one is always interesting, but that you should wait for it to evolve and kind of achieve its true form. You know, I think the iPhone achieved its quote unquote true form with the iPhone 4. The Apple Watch may not get there until two or three. Um, that said, uh, I, the thing I love the most about it is the notification. So uh, I, I like the fact that I get my text messages through it. I can do brief responses uh, if I want to, but more, mostly it's when I'm at dinner, when I'm talking to people, I can just glance over. It doesn't feel obtrusive. It doesn't feel like I'm interrupting the conversation. And I find because I get those notifications to the watch, I'm not checking my phone for notifications because usually when you pull your, pull your phone out, there's a million things you can be doing on it. You can check Twitter, you can check Tumblr, you can check your email, all these things. You can do some of those things on the Apple Watch, but it's it's really not well suited for it. It's mostly just a great communication and notification device. I use it all the time to send text messages. You know, the fact that you can just hold a button down or talk to it, and it's it fairly accurately sends text messages. Occasionally I use it for phone calls, but the, the volume is just not loud enough for it to be particularly useful. Um, but more importantly, the exercise uh, component of it, I find to be incredibly compelling. Um, so you can set goals for yourself, both for exercise, uh, for standing, which is, I don't know how much that is worth, uh, and then for a total calorie count uh, that you wanna burn throughout the day. And because of that, uh, I strive to hit that every single day. It gets me to walk up and down the stairs when I've got a couple minutes. It gets me to walk my dog longer. It gets me to go out for a short jog uh, in the afternoon. All those things contribute to me wanting to hit those goals. Now, do you need an Apple Watch to do that? No, but I like the what is included in the Apple Watch for me to sort of hit all of those different things. The, the communication and the exercise I found to be uh, incredibly useful and has actually improved my life uh, because having that daily sort of goal uh, gives me something to do on days where, well, I don't know if I can actually go out and do a huge run, but maybe I can go for around the block uh, or maybe I can uh, go for a long walk and, and try and get a step towards there. Uh, and yeah, so I, you know, like I said, probably wanna wait, but in terms of uh, whether I'm happy with the, the watch that I got, I totally am. Um, and I'll probably at least buy the next one and then it'll probably be on sort of an iPad-like schedule where you, you buy one every three or four years or something like that. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Buying a Kaguana. You're gonna learn some of the ongoing WWE stories before you attend the event with Dan so you can better appreciate the artistic spectacle. Absolutely not. I'm going to uh, go to the WWE event whenever we go without knowing anything. I don't wanna know about wrestling. I don't wanna learn about wrestling. I don't wanna experience wrestling until I actually have to go to wrestling. That is the way it's gonna be. Uh, Faded MFC, any more developments on the future of the Rewatch podcast? Uh, unfortunately, Max and I have been extremely busy. Lots of things happening in my personal life and personal career, lots of things happening in his personal life and personal career. So we have intentions of going back to that at some point, but there is no timetable for the return of the Rewatch podcast. Uh, there is a possibility of us doing some special one-offs. I think that's kind of what we're looking at it now is rather than uh, trying to do the episode by episode thing that we had trouble keeping up with, is there a way for us to do some special one-offs so we can bring some closure to people for that series. So stay tuned to that. Uh, again, no specific timetable, but it is not something I have completely forgotten about. Uh, da, da, da. W. Matthew, what am I missing about The Witness? All I see is a missed clone, so why is the games press falling all over it? Well, I would not say it's just the games press. Uh, Jonathan Blow tweeted out today that The Witness is on track to sell more copies uh, in its first week than Braid did, and Braid is what made Jonathan Blow a multimillionaire. Um, so it seems like The Witness is resonating uh, beyond uh, just the game's press saying that it's an excellent puzzle game. Uh, I've been distracted from The Witness because I've been playing a ton of Rise of the Tomb Raider. I've been looking forward to that game for so long, but I knew I wanted to wait until it came out on PC, and my patience has been rewarded because that game is excellent and it's awesome and I kind of wish I was playing it right now and I was sort of tempted to do the Q&A show while playing Rise of the Tomb Raider, but I ended up not doing that. That said, with The Witness, what's compelling about The Witness is that, right, so you can look at it as just a game that has very little story, it takes place on an island, you're just doing these puzzles over and over again. But what's fascinating about The Witness, and I, and I don't want to get into a hyperbole, right? I just think it's an excellent 
puzzle game. But what it what it does is something very pure. It's very clear about its intent. It's very clear about its design, and it does exactly that, which is to say, we are going to teach you some rules about puzzles, and then we're going to stack the way those rules work, so that you have had to have done the previous puzzles to understand how the future puzzles work. And it doesn't hold your hand, but it's not impossible. And it, it just makes you feel incredibly smart. It's gratifying, it's rewarding. There are a few games that make you feel like you've accomplished something. And in The Witness, when you get through a difficult section, when you've been banging your head against a puzzle for two days and you get it, you feel like you genuinely accomplished something. Like in Tomb Raider, I'm really enjoying it. I, again, it's, like I said, I love it. When I make it through a sequence, I don't know if I pat myself on the back and go, you did it, buddy. You made it through. I get different kinds of enjoyment from Rise of the Tomb Raider. With The Witness, it feels like an intellectual challenge that is rewarding in a way that not many games are even trying to accomplish. And so I, I could see someone playing it and just not getting it, just going, these are just some, some line puzzles. But uh, there is something to it. Uh, that I have found very rewarding and it's why I keep going back to it. And I'm not rushing through it. I'm really genuinely going to try to not cheat at that game at all. So I'm okay with walking away from it for a couple of days, coming back, hoping some fresh eyes will allow me to move forward. There's a puzzle involving some that I got stuck on a couple nights ago and I'm hoping to get back to tonight and I'm hoping the light bulb will go off. Uh, and uh, it'll, it'll make me feel good. Uh, Digibits. Uh... Hey, Patrick, love the channel. Appreciate your great streams, past and present. Did you ever finish the Bloodborne DLC? And if so, did you enjoy the resolution? Uh, I did. I, I enjoyed the Bloodborne DLC uh, very much. Um, I'm still of the opinion that I wish... So the way my character was set up in Bloodborne, I had finished the game, gone into New Game Plus, and not proceeded past the opening section. And so when the DLC came out, I had to play the game on New Game Plus because there was no way to roll back to regular New Game. And... The, I, I, there are certain things about the way From Software implements their design that I understand why people appreciate it, but I think it ends up being a barrier to entry that is unnecessary. I would have had no problem. So Sony told me, and I think they've been telling other, you know, sort of outwardly, that there was a certain level uh, mark that they recommended you be at uh, in order to properly enjoy the DLC. If that's true, if like, let's say it's level 45, What's to stop them from allowing you to, to roll a new character that's level 45? They're not going to start you in front of the DLC, but maybe you start at 45 and then you can just roll with quickly through. Um, the other thing is that I don't like the fact that you can't respec in uh, in Bloodborne. You can do that in Dark Souls 2. You can't do it in Dark Souls 1 or Demon Souls. But I just don't like the idea that I have to play through the game all over again in order to try a different style of character or I have to spend a bunch of time grinding to get all of my stats up to the various level caps so that I can experiment with different types of weapons. That just seems unnecessary. But the DLC I think is terrific. I think if you haven't played Bloodborne, you should get it in the DLC. If you've gotten Bloodborne and haven't played the DLC, you absolutely should. Uh, and I just cannot wait for Dark Souls 3 to come out in, gosh, I mean, it's not a couple of weeks, but it's a couple of months. And what I've seen of it so far, it looks spectacular. What I've played of it so far seems like more Dark Souls. And I'm really hoping that series is going to go out on a high note because, I, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Uh, the Souls games are my call of duty and I will take one every year, please and thank you. Uh, Saucy Pigeon. So with that said, The Witness or Fez? Uh, wow. Hmm. Based on what I've played so far, Fez. Uh, Fez was a revelatory experience to me. That is one of my favorite games of all time. So, Fez. But The Witness is pretty good, too. Uh, ta -ta. Hanson85. As an inspiring YouTuber, does, sometimes does reaction videos. Do you have a take on the Fine Brothers debacle? Uh, so let's uh, recap this for people who are not aware. Uh, the Fine Brothers are uh, responsible uh, for some of the more popular videos, uh, video series on YouTube. If you've seen uh, uh, Elders React or Teens React or other things of that nature, basically blank React. There are lots of reaction videos on YouTube and other video services on the internet. There's, uh, that's not exclusive to this Fine Brothers Entertainment Company, but they very much popularized a certain version of this, and if you had to point to the most popular reaction style videos on YouTube, they definitely come from the Fine Brothers. Now recently they launched something called, uh, was it, uh, 
React World. And React World is basically a licensing program so that if you wanted to use their graphics packages, if you wanted to use their very specific format and styling, then you can sign up, you give them, uh, I believe a percentage of the ad revenue, and then you also work with them and they work with you. The idea being, the analogy they have used is that you can start a new burger chain, but also you could license Burger King's name and open a new Burger King. And so to them, this is saying that we would like if you'd like, you can license what we do and build off of that. Uh, this has led to a lot of hand wringing uh, over the internet, I think rightly so. Uh, confusion over the fact that they are trademarking uh, certain uh, names such as Reacts. They claim it's so that they can keep their YouTube channel uh, from being put into the hands of someone else who files a trademark. Uh, I think the feeling from a lot of people on the internet is that they are trying to clamp down on reaction videos entirely. They have denied the idea that they are trying to clamp down on reaction videos entirely, but I think it is a fair criticism. I think it is a uh, fair fear to have about the steps they are taking in which they are not happy with the ad revenue coming in just from the videos, but that they have to go a step forward uh, forward to create a license program to make money off of other people's reaction videos. Now, as a creator, I can see why you might be interested in participating. If you think that you can get the exposure for your reaction videos uh, by partnering with them, maybe that's an opportunity uh, that makes sense to you. That said, I do think they own like a 50% split on the profits on whatever videos are made under that program. So even if you split off, those old videos aren't gonna be making 100% profits for you anymore. Um, there have been, uh, I haven't looked into it entirely, but I've been linked to a couple of videos in which people claim they have had their videos content ID'd, uh, which is to say they have been uh, copyright struck, which means they have been brought down and cannot be viewed. Uh, in one particular instance, it appeared to be someone who did a reaction video to one of their reaction videos. So it's a, a chain of reaction videos happening uh, here. Uh, and um, they were concerned that the Fine Brothers were going too far with trying to protect their own copyright and trademarks. And I think that's the fine line that the Fine Brothers have to walk here, but I just don't know how they're going to come out looking good out of this. This seems like overstepping their boundaries. You know, I think it's a totally fair criticism to say that they are making money off of people reacting to other people's content and now they are clamping down on people making content reacting to their, you know what I mean? Like the, the daisy chain there is is pretty complicated. So uh, the, the, the hand wringing I think is totally fair. And so they've seen their subscriber numbers go down. They have 14 million uh, on one of their channels. And I think the Reacts videos has an, an equally high number of subscribers. So I don't know that a couple of thousand people unsubscribing in protest is gonna make a huge difference in their bottom line. But the reaction from the, the, reaction from the React guys uh, suggests that they are taking this seriously. And I'm gonna be curious kind of how it plays out um, in the future. Um, you know, the, two, the couple of reaction videos that I have done, which were specifically where me and my wife react to new horror movie trailers because we find that fun and we're doing it anyway in our living room. Uh, you know, neither of those I can monetize. You know, those are claimed by the the people who make the trailers, uh, you know, like Warner Brothers for The Conjuring. Uh, so I don't make any money off those, but they're just fun to do. So it's, it's an interesting legal, ethical, moral question that uh, I'll be curious to see how it uh, shakes out. I'll probably be writing about it for Kotaku on Monday. Chris Wasey, I know you haven't jumped into the Mario Maker tools, but any interest in creating a level with chat suggestions? Absolutely. Uh, it is one of my goals in the next month or two to unlock all the creation tools in Mario Maker, learn a little bit more about how uh, the system works, and then sit down with all of you and make a stage. And, and I'm nervous to make create, create levels because I don't think I am creative. I don't think I am all that interesting when it comes to that. It's why I have stuck to playing levels uh, as opposed to uh, making them. Um, but uh, enough people have asked, and I, I think they're right. I think if I'm scared, I need to give it a shot. Uh, and so uh, I am looking forward to trying out um, some uh, of those uh, in the future and uh, actually uh, uh, creating uh, some of my own stages. So uh, exactly how that's gonna work out, I don't know, but do uh, look forward to that uh, in uh, the future. Uh, Uh, the Mute Kai, do you know anything about what the archives here on Twitch are muting the sound for? Have you talked to Twitch about that? Are you not concerned to send the archives go to YouTube anyway? Uh, so essentially what uh, they're asking about is that if you go to some of my Twitch archives, which are not permanent, they stay there for what, 60 days? Uh, sometimes there are muted sections for seemingly no reason. Uh, I don't know what the case, I don't know what's happening there. Um, 
I haven't really investigated it because the archives go up on YouTube about two, two and a half hours after they happen on Twitch. Uh, so it's unfortunate for the people that, are, that missed the live stream and can't catch it in that window. But, you know, the archives go up on YouTube uh, later anyway. And, and for me personally, it is better for the archives to do well on YouTube than they are to do well on Twitch because they are not permanent on Twitch. I can't create a channel here uh, in the same way that I can't on YouTube. So it's not a huge concern for me. My guess is some of the Mario music is somehow getting caught up in their music algorithm, but I'm not uh, sure of the specifics. Uh, Chris Wasey says, it's not hard if my three-year-old can make a level, you can too. All right, well, that's that's fair. That's fair. I didn't say I couldn't make a level. I was saying maybe my levels are going to be bad, and then I would be embarrassed, and I don't like being embarrassed. Uh, quarantine, uh, ND, quarantine, quarantined. What happened to your signature Astro headset? They broke. And so I bought uh, these pairs of headphones and they seem to work uh, just uh, fine. Uh, let's see, uh, let's, uh, we're gonna get here close to wrapping it up here in just a second. Um, so if uh, anyone else has a question they'd like to drop in, like I said, if you are a subscriber to the channel, uh, you get preference on uh, asking questions. Doesn't mean I won't look at your question, doesn't mean it won't get considered, but signing up and supporting the channel uh, is uh, the best way to get uh, noticed here uh, if you uh, would like to uh, ask a question. So, you know, just reminded folks uh, as we uh, wind through here uh, to the end. Uh, Beatman, would the highlight reels be appropriate places to post my Mario Maker levels? Yes, YouTube comments are the best spot to put your Mario Maker stages. It's where I pluck a couple and put them into my notebook. Uh, and then uh, if I'm going to uh, check them out, um, then that's usually where I'm pulling them from. Uh, the Mute Kai, I for one would love an evening stream where Patrick takes suggestions for level design, giant bomb style. Uh, yes, that would be the idea. Uh, the idea that would, maybe we could leverage our, our collective creativity and then that would make me not feel so guilty about having no ideas. Uh, w Matthew, are you going to dive into XCOM 2? I am. I am excited, but there are so many games happening right now. I've got The Witness. Uh, I've got uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. I'm finishing The Room 3 on my iPad. We're playing uh, Undertale on the PC. Um, Firewatch comes out in two weeks. XCOM 2 comes out in two weeks. And Fire Emblem Fates comes out in three weeks. There's a lot of video games coming out in the next couple of weeks. There's stuff going on. It's really exciting, but also, ah, I thought I had a moment to breathe, and then suddenly that moment to breathe has passed us by. Uh, McGinnis921. Oh, actually, this your question is related to one I had here from Sean Sharkey. So the, you two are overlapping. Hey, Patrick, I won't be able to attend the stream because of work, but a question I'd like to ask is, would you occasionally consider doing meetups for subscriber, especially the local ones, or in some other locations, depending on your travels? Absolutely. I would love to do a meetup out here in Chicago at the Cards Against Humanities office. Uh, that's one of my, uh, I think I'm gonna, we're gonna do like a match three, Patrick Klupik, just meet up. Um, maybe we'll uh, just play some games, have some beers, uh, maybe do a live podcast. I'm not exactly sure of the setup. But if you're in the Chicagoland area, if you're in Wisconsin, Indiana, wherever you might be, if you're interested in having a meetup, uh, definitely uh, keep uh, your eyes out. Uh, we'll announce details uh, sometime in the next month or so. I think it'd just be fun to hang out and meet people in person because as much as the internet is cool, I love me the internet. It's also fantastic to sit down with people face to face, talk about games, talk about life. So look forward uh, to something like that. Uh, happening. Uh, McGinnis921 says maybe have it when Dan comes to town. Um, that all depends on Dan's schedule, how long he'll be in town, when exactly that happens, but definitely uh, it's something we'll keep in mind uh, as a possibility uh, when uh, Mr. Reichert makes it to town. Uh, but that is going to do it uh, for uh, Three Beers Deep. If you uh, got into this video a little bit late, uh, don't worry. It'll be up on YouTube in a little while. Uh, I'm also about to work on another sort of like news commentary uh, video. Uh, the one last week was about uh, games banned for streaming on Twitch. I think this week it's going to be about conversations about piracy as it relates to The Witness. So there's a lot of really interesting things happening there. So that's kind of my afternoon plan is to sketch out uh, and, and write and edit that. So look forward to that. Uh, if not tomorrow, then sometime early this week. I've got to figure out the exact scheduling uh, on that. Uh, you can ask me questions on a daily basis. Uh, if you go to Tumblr, you know, the link. I don't know if I have the Tumblr link below. I don't know if I... 
I think I added that. Uh, but you can go to patrickclubbing.tumblr.com. I'll add that to, to just below the stream. Uh, but thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, doing this. Uh, the plan is to do this at least twice a month. Uh, I don't know if I can keep to the, the weekly schedule just because of various commitments I have in my personal life. But thanks for hanging out. Uh, I have appreciated uh, seeing everyone. Just, you know, just, what all, just what a bunch of wonderful folk you are. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. There's tons of other stuff around here. You might have watched me die tomorrow. You might have watched me scream at horror games. You might have watched me react to trailers with my wife. You might have watched me share some of the coolest video games out there that you've never heard of. There's lots going on on the site. YouTube, so that means what? You have to, you have to like, 